how's it going YouTube welcome back to the needy homesteader channel and I have all the feels right now you guys so we are about to do our very first canning session in over a year and um, since before our accident and I have all the feels and I just want to thank you guys uh, for the uh, the comments that you left for me on my previous video which I will link up above for you guys I think it'll be in that corner I always forget which corner I think it'll be in that corner um, I can only read them in I guess in groups um, because they're very emotional for me so if you got a heart from me that means I read it <laughs> and <laughs> I probably boohooed um, with every comment it was so uh, I feel the love you guys and thank you so um, with that said I'm super excited I'm super nervous I have a bunch of emotions running through me as we oh pass another milestone you know we do another first we do another first and we're just gonna keep moving forward so Matt, if you can hear me, <laughs> be with me during this canning session. Lord, be with me. Um, make it successful. And I hope and I pray that this inspires you guys to can your own beef bone uh, broth or stock. Um, and so we're going to do it in pints. That's what I'm going to can mine in because I tend to, I like to do pints and quarts when it comes to stock, but for beef bone broth, I'm probably going to use more pints than I will um, quarts. With my onion stock, I, I tend to use a lot of quarts. So, um, so we're going to, we're going to can it in pints. I'm getting everything out now. Uh, thank you to those of you who reminded me to prep my canner because it's been over a year and so I needed to wash it and put the the Vaseline on it and all those things so it doesn't seize up on me and um, so I'm just kind of uh, fidgeting through my basket right now and touching all all the canning things so get out a funnel you're gonna get out a scoop you're gonna or a ladle of some sort uh, a jar lifter um, or a lid lifter jar lifter um, I am going to be using um, some cheesecloth. I get my cheesecloth now on um, on Amazon, and I really, really love it. I will link it down below for you guys. It's a little bit of a finer mesh than what I was getting at um, Grove uh, Collaborative. So I'm really liking this cheesecloth. And um, I'm going to spin you around. I'm going to put you on the tripod, and uh, let's get to canning. All right, and before we even get to our jars, which I did wash in the dishwasher, by the way, um, we are going to take a look at this beautiful bone broth, right? So um, I'm probably going to just skim. I think I'm going to take another uh, spoon, a metal spoon. I'm going to skim that kind of the um, scum off the top, for lack of better words. And then um, I am going to be using a fat separator okay which looks just like this i also got this off of amazon i've never used this kind before i usually use the i think it's a two cupper it was smaller with the um with the spout which to be honest with you guys i kind of struggled with so i'm looking forward to using this this is a four cupper and the strainer is at the bottom so you use this little um push down button here and it will strain from the bottom so this is a fat separator and what this will do the fat will rise to the top the broth will go to the bottom and then we will just put this over our cheesecloth in our jars and we'll can it up that way so um all right let me get this kind of skimmed off and then i will show you what the bone broth looks like. all right so there we have it and i'm just going to kind of ladle off of the top here I'm going to get you set up and then 
and we'll show you how I'm going to do it. It's not the, you know, there's no right or wrong way, whichever way you figure out that's easier for you. But this is the way that I'm going to do it. And hopefully um, it'll be easy for you guys. Okay, so what I'm going to do is slowly, and hopefully you guys can see this, I'm going to just... right into my fat strainer here and you kind of want to do it slow and easy so the fat will go to the top faster and then I'm gonna set this down so I can show you guys what it looks like okay so, I'm going to try to zoom you in here and see if we can't show you the fat part right there. Okay, so you see right here, this layer right here is the fat. And then from here down is the broth. So we still want to strain this because you can see that there's pieces of meat in there. There's some peppercorns in there. So we're still going to go ahead and strain this. And I kind of wanted to show you the difference with the cheesecloth. So this is the cheesecloth from Grove that I used to use. Okay. I don't know if you can see the kind of a you can see the mesh in that. And then this is the new one that I found that I've been using from Amazon. So, so you can see that it's a much tighter mesh than the Grove one, and I am loving this. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, set up our first jar and our funnel and our cheesecloth and we're gonna go ahead and strain that okay you guys hopefully that's a good setup there for you now make sure everything is clean before you get started um, including your lids I cannot tell you how many times I see people taking their lids right out of a box and putting them right on their jar wash them first you don't know where they've been you know cockroaches rats everything likes cardboard so Make sure everything is as clean as possible. You're spending a lot of time and a lot of money on your canning. There's a lot of love that goes into these jars. So don't do any shortcuts, especially when you're new. Get into good, good habits right out, right out of the gate. And, um, and you will be successful at canning, okay? I promise. All right, so hopefully you can see that. So I went ahead and put my funnel in and then my cheesecloth and I dampen my cheesecloth a bit with some hot water and now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna here's this this is our our fat separator here I'm just gonna open that up I'm gonna do it to one inch headspace and I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. So the fat is still at the top. And the jar, let me get you over here so you can kind of see the inside of this jar is beautiful. It is clear. It is like a gem. See that? absolutely beautiful and that's exactly what your stock should look like now I want to point out that I am going to be using canning instructions from Bernardin okay and this can be found if you have this version uh, this copy of Bernardin it is going to be found on page 99 okay so here's all the stocks They've got beef stock, chicken stock, and vegetable stock. Now we go, we got it in focus. So we're gonna be doing the beef stock. And of course I added a bay leaf and some onion. I did not add any carrot, but I did add celery. I didn't add any beef bouillon cubes or anything like that. And this is gonna process for 20 minutes for pints and 25 minutes for quarts. Um, and I think I'm only gonna be doing pints, but we'll see if I have to run a second canner, uh, but that, 
is the processing time okay so let me get you set back off to the side and we'll get these jars cleaned up okay so now what we're gonna do is I'm just using some white distilled vinegar and I have it in a little dish over here to the side and with a paper towel you always want to keep this super clean I've also seen people just they're using sponges and they're using the same thing over and over again remember you guys you're you are cleaning off any grease and debris so you want to make sure that you're constantly turning and keeping it clean if you're if you're using the same thing over and over and over again you're just going to be smearing the grease and debris on all of your jars so keep changing it keep changing your napkins um, and try to keep it as clean as possible. And then with that said, we're going to go ahead, get a lid on here. We're going to get a ring on here. Make sure that your rings are in good shape. You don't want rusty rings or, you know, uh, bent rings or anything like that. So we're going to do fingertip tight and mouse toes always says limp wrist. <laughs> for fingertip tight and I love that because it's always spot on and you'll get the feel the more you can and then that is it you guys so here I'm going to try to lift this with my non-fractured wrist <laughs> there you have it oh beautiful okay in the canner it goes I have an all-american canner that I'm using so I've gone ahead and added the water already to it to three inch mark and then we're just going to add those in make sure you add a kerplunk of vinegar so that um, you don't have any hard water marks on your jars they just come out a little cleaner and then let's do one more jar together shall we all right let's do one more here make sure you can see that and i'm going to ladle a little bit more stock in here let it sit for a minute if you want just to allow that to kind of separate a little bit all right and then we'll get it into a jar again one inch head space oh it smells so good in my house you guys I posted over on Facebook and Instagram that they should make a candle Bath and Body Works, if you're listening, you need a beef stock candle. And then somebody gave me the link to chicken soup. Campbell's, Campbell's made a chicken soup candle. So cool. So it smells like chicken soup in your house. Ugh. All right. One inch head space. Okay. Go ahead and clean napkin go ahead wipe those rims get a lid on it I do set my lids in really hot water so it just softens the um, the compound a little bit get a ring on there fingertip tight and jar number two goes into the canner all right, you guys, I'm going to find my peace and my joy, and I'm going to enjoy canning up the rest of these jars. And as soon as I get them all in the canner, I'll bring you back and I'll show you what it looks guys, like. So we've got 17 pints in the canner. I've got a little bit left over, probably not enough to run a canner load. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through the fat separator, which, by the way, this is a game changer, you guys. If you don't have... A four cup that drains from the bottom if you've used the spigot ones like I have in the past which are terrible they just seem to always get the fat in the stock oh this I love this it's the first time that I've used that I'll leave a link down below for it uh, I got it off of Amazon and I am in love the next stock that I'll be making is a roasted chicken stock and I can't wait to use that again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it through that and then I'm going to put this in probably a half gallon uh, jar and set it in my fridge because tomorrow night I'm making uh, beef stew for dinner and so I'm gonna use some of the stock in my beef stew instead of using water. So I went ahead, I already put my lid on. I'm going to now put this on the heat and we're gonna get this going. 
And um, when it starts venting, I'll bring you back and then uh, put the weight on and we'll process this for 20 minutes and then shut it off and let it come off of pressure naturally. And then we'll pull these beauties out of the um, out of the canner and I can't wait to see. All right, you guys, so that canning session just ended and it is just about 12.30 in the morning. So now I'm gonna crack this canner open. Always open it away from you so you don't get a facial. And there we have it. Look at that. Oh, it smells so good. All right, let me set you up at the counter and we'll get these out. All right, we're gonna pull these out. So pretty and smells so good. You can see headspace is still on point at one inch. No siphoning. That's always a good sign of a nice controlled canning session. Are you not running your canner too hard? When I pull my jars out, I like to give them enough space. If you can hear them, I'm starting to seal. Oh, I am so sorry, you guys. You guys ran out of battery on me. All right, there we go. So, let's get back to this. Oh, so pretty. And smells so good. So when I bring them out, I don't like to crowd them. I like them to have a nice airflow so that they can cool. And don't touch the lids or anything. Some of them have sealed already. Some of them have not. I'm going to take you off the tripod here. And give you a nice view. Every single one it's one inch head space. So we controlled our canner and the temperature. We didn't rush the process. We didn't hurry it along. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, very, very happy with this canning session and happy to get these up on my pantry shelf. I cooked my stock down for 36 roughly hours and um, got a beautiful, beautiful result. I'm really happy. I'm gonna show you how nice and clean my water is. And there's about an inch of water, which is pretty typical and normal uh, for a canning session. But okay, you guys, with that said, there it is now. Tomorrow, I will bring you back. I'll turn on the camera again and we will check these. We'll make sure everything's sealed. Uh, I'll show you how I do that. We'll wash them up. I'll show you how I do that and label them and get them on our pantry shelf. Um, and then I think maybe the next canning session I think I'm gonna do, I've got um, two chickens, whole chickens from my neighbor downstairs in my freezer and I really wanna do a roasted chicken broth. So that is on my list. I don't know when I can squeeze that in, but that's next on my list to um, to can. Uh, there's some other videos that I'd love to do for you guys, so not sure what I'm gonna do next after uh, tomorrow's video, um, but I will definitely be back. So thanks for hanging out with me, you guys, and thanks for canning with me for the first time in a year. Um, 
it was definitely better doing it with you guys than doing it on my own so and thank you for all the wonderful wonderful posts comments that you're leaving me um like i said i can only read so many at a time because uh, they're so emotional for me uh, but i appreciate each and every one as we listen to the pings oh we listen to the pings all right you guys have a great night um i'm gonna try to edit this maybe tonight if not tomorrow and get this up as soon as i can for you guys but i i love each and every one of you and i hope that this video uh, blesses one of you out there that's you know has a uh, has a uh, home food preservation laying on your heart so with that I will see you soon and before I head to bed it is one o'clock in the morning but I got four quarts of beautiful bone broth for my fridge some of that will be used tomorrow night in homemade beef stew that I'm gonna make and then some of that we can just warm and drink of course before you do that you're gonna want to add some seasonings to it if if you want some salt some added pepper some onion you can add garlic to it however you want to doctor it up um, but you can drink that and it's really healthy for you and it should be really good for um, my leg my leg injury so I hope you give this a try